Alright folks, uh, time for another uh, ukulele review, video review to complement those that are already written up on Got A Ukulele. This is the Martin T1K Tenor Ukulele, a standard tenor shaped uke uh, in solid colour uh, and it's really rather nice. Um, this is not quite bottom end of the Martin range but it's not far away, um, bearing in mind that Martin can run up to about five thousand dollars, three grand uh, in UK pounds. This cost me just under four hundred UK pounds, so pretty cheap. Um, a serious price for a ukulele, of course, but cheaper than um, any comparable handmade tenor koa Hawaiian uke. Um, the reason it's cheaper is it's not made in the Martin factory in the USA. Um, equally, it's not made under license in the Far East either. This is made by Martin. They have a factory just over the border in Mexico where the costs are cheaper. But it's Martin parts and it's put together by Martin employees. So, uh, still a Martin, but um, I know some people scoff at that. So let's have a look. We've got a standard shape. Um, nice color wood. Nothing um, particularly fancy for this money in terms of flame or curl. Um, but we've got a, a, a nice book match top uh, with some, some stripe and colour variation and a nice book match back with uh, an arch on the back to help with sound projection. Nice bit of darker wood stripe going around the sides, um, which I think looks great. Um, and it's finished in a hand rubbed uh, oil satin finish, which um, doesn't help to show off any of the flame or colour variation in the colour. Um, but it doesn't half feel nice. Um, I like satin ukes myself. I don't go in for a lot of bling and gloss. I do own some, but uh, given the choice, I like a plain ukulele, and this is a plain ukulele. The downside to that satin finish is um, it's quite easy for this uke to pick up finger marks, scratches. Uh, if you have the bad habit, like I sometimes do, of planting your finger when you're picking, um, yeah, I've put some little dings in it already. I've scuffed it up here from vigorous strumming but you know I don't really mind that's fine by me this is an instrument it's meant to be played I don't want to put it in a, a glass cabinet and have it as a display piece what's the point of that I play music um, so we have a standard shape no bling no binding uh, the only decoration on the top is a transfer black white black sound hole uh, rosette um, the bridge material is a rosewood or morado wood with a little bit of stripe in it and a tusk compensated saddle. Um, it looks fairly standard, the bridge. It's a tie bar bridge, but actually when you really get into the detail of it, it's really nicely shaped um, rather than just a straight cut slot for this saddle to fit into. Um, it's actually in a nice routed out shape, smooth down little, little slot. I know that because I, I took it out to lower the action. Um, really nice. Um, Onto the neck, we have what Martin described as a hardwood neck, so I don't know what sort of wood it is, um, NATO, mahogany perhaps, I don't know, but it's nice. Um, it's one piece, which is good to see all the way through, and it feels really smooth. It's lovely, uh, really well shaped, nicely finished, quite um, a bit of chunk, uh, a nice profile up at the nut, albeit a very narrow nut compared to that on, say, my Canalea, which... Um, which has got a much wider nut up here, um, but it's nice. The fingerboard is topped with Murado wood, which has got a nice stripe to it, as you can see. Uh, the edges aren't bound, but the frets are set um, perfectly well. There are no, no rough edges. It all looks very neat. We have tiny uh, finger position markers, fret markers, on the uke, which I don't really understand. Um, Fret markers on that part of the ukulele facing out don't really benefit the player at all because you don't see them. What I rely on, and I'm glad to see, are side fret markers, and thanks Martin for that. It's amazing how many manufacturers fail to put those on instruments. I mean, how much can it cost? Um, but if these ones, to me, seem to be markers for people looking at the uke, so they recognise it as an instrument, but they're so small. <laughs> Some people have said they look nice and cool and understated. I, I'd leave them off altogether if you're going to do them that small. Up to the headstock, we have a standard Martin shape with uh, quite, a, quite an exaggerated Martin crown. Uh, the headstock is faced with a, a veneer of koa. Um, and my first gripe with the instrument, the logo. Um, look, this, is, this isn't an expensive 
instrument in the big scheme of things. I'm not expecting inlaid abalone or mother of pearl. But this is a, it's a sticker. It's a raised sticker. It reminds me of those things that are stuck onto greeting cards that your kids come home from nursery with. It's, it's tacky. <laughs> I don't understand it. Um, why they couldn't have just gone with a gold silk screen print or transfer, which would have looked just, well, it would have looked better, to be honest. I don't know. Uh, tuners provided by Grover, open back tuners. These are excellent tuners. Um, these really are accurate and work extremely well. They're exactly the same tuners as on my Canalea K1. The only difference being these have got white plastic buttons. The Canalea have silver buttons. Um, and there you have it. I mean, it, um, it's, it feels great. It's got a nice weight. It's nicely balanced. It's well put together. There wasn't a mark on it at all. It's, um, it's really nicely uh, built. Uh, that neck is attached to the body with a dovetail joint, which is quite unusual and something Martin do with their guitars, so it's not just glued and bolted on, there's actually a channel routed out here of the top of the body and it's slotted in to give a better fit. And, you know, you've got that sort of quality throughout. That's Martin Bill quality that comes from many, many years of making stringed instruments. Um, the action at the nut when it uh, arrived for me was absolutely perfect. The nut is really nicely finished too. The saddle needed to go down a touch, but not a lot. That was just personal preference and no complaint. Um, and actually, if you're buying an instrument of this, of this um, price, you really should be prepared to have a play with the setup if you're going to play it, because it, I take it you're a serious player if you are buying an instrument like this. Um, it arrived with Martin Tenor fluorocarbon strings. Now, I'd already heard that this was a very bright sharp sounding instrument and those strings for me really did just push that a little bit too far um, I always recommend that string choice is a personal thing you should experiment I've experimented with several sets and settled on these Fremont 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 Blackline fluorocarbon strings which just take the bite down a little bit not too much it's still a bright instrument if you um, as you can hear it's In terms of comparing it to a Hawaiian Canalea Tanayuk, it's not quite as rich, um, but there's not a lot in it. The volume's certainly there. It beats the Canalea on that. The Canalea feels a little warmer. Uh, it's a little boxier. I mean, that really sounds like I'm doing it a disservice, but you know, I'm just I'm just being honest. It's a great sound of ukulele, and for me, um, it comes absolutely highly recommended. It's not a vintage, but I'm not in the market for buying vintage ukes. And got a ukulele is about letting people know what they can buy off the shelf. Um, in fact, does it matter that it says Martin on it? Take the logo off. I mean, it's an instrument, it's very well made, it's got great sound, and um, I'd recommend you try one. I think they're, uh, I think they're great fun, um, and I think this will serve you well for many years. Thank you.